All these rejections from the middle Bollinger Band. resistance, we're going to need to see here. We get a will look for a healthy tire. I would not don't have the full map to end the long trade. Hey everyone, hope you're having a fantastic Friday. A lot of news to cover. Then we're going to look at BTC, ETH, and IOT as we head into the weekend and wrap up this current weekly candlestick. So lots to talk about with the news and the tweet that I made uh, was a little bit late on this news, about an hour or two after it, but most likes and shares easily that we've ever gotten. So that tells me that the market was sleeping a little bit on this news. It's not seeing a huge reaction to the price. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, uh, when I go more in depth about this news, I'll give the details, but it's just, it's further down the road. You know, the company that I'm going to be talking about isn't going to be formed until November. We're looking into 2019. So it's not the kind of news where you want to rush and buy right now, which is why we aren't seeing a huge price reaction in relation to it. The other thing is, I do not think that the herd and retail investors really understand the news. You know, they see this headline and this gets their attention. And honestly, the price action of what's gone on in relation to this news today just makes me shake my head and say, well, I'm glad that the herd acts like this because that's how I profit as a trader off of the herd that reads articles and makes decisions based off of that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. But the bottom line is, this is a very big bullish step forward longer term for, well, I mean, it all depends on your opinion as always, because this is very centralized what's going on. And I'll explain it now. Let's just get right into it. So the first headline that is catching people's eyes New Starbucks partnership with Microsoft allows customers to pay for Frappuccinos with Bitcoin. So that came out this morning and definitely had a bit of a bullish reaction, not significant. And we can look at the shorter term timeframes on Bitcoin just to see how it reacted. And I don't think it saw significant moves. What I do think it did is add a little bit of follow through. So this move could have happened on its own either way. But I think we saw an extra, you know, $100 of upside because there was a bullish sentiment tied with the news today. And then we had this all out dump where some news got retracted, which we'll look at. But so it's the news that Starbucks partnering with Microsoft. And if you read the article and get some information about this news, you realize that Starbucks is not accepting cryptocurrency. What they're looking to do is partner with a company. The company is going to then instantaneously exchange your Bitcoin for US dollars and then give the US dollars to Starbucks. And you know, you pay with your phone, swiping your phone. So that information is all apparent. But the herd loves to read headlines and that's it. So then this article comes out. Sorry, but Starbucks will not be accepting Bitcoin. And they have to clarify, no, they're not physically accepting the Bitcoin. They're looking to do this with the company that I just explained. This came out at 130. And then look at the price of Bitcoin. It topped out right at 130. And then it all out dumped. So again, was the dump caused by this? No, maybe not. It was probably magnified by it. So we were due for hourly consolidation but it was more significant consolidation, probably from people reacting to this article. So that's just clowns reading an article and making decisions based on the headline, in my opinion. And that is why we don't do that. We let charts dictate our decision. So I'm looking at this from a longer term perspective. Did I buy anything based on this news? No, but from a unbiased level-headed perspective, this is very bullish news for me. So while it's not showing up on the chart right now, it's going to have an effect on things in 2019 and beyond. So that this is the minor news for me, the Starbucks thing. This is what the herd get pays attention to because these are the names they know. They know Microsoft and they know Starbucks. This is the big news. And this is the article you should read about it on Fortune. I'll, I'll attach this link in the description. But it is ICE, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange, they're looking to make a company and they're looking to do it in November. So again, this is nothing here and now. They're making a company in November. They have to get a, approval from the CFTC, which is which is CFTC, yeah, very likely to happen. It's not, you know, the same low odds of ETF, but what this does is it increases the odds of an ETF in the future because what they're looking to do is create a company to act as a custodian for institutional investors. Essentially, they're looking to do what Coinbase is trying to do and they actually invested, ICE invested in Coinbase in 2015. So they're pretty much, it looks to me like they're saying, hey, Coinbase, we're now your competition and we're looking to do what you're trying to do. So they're catering towards institutional invest investors to be custodians and to handle these large transactions and also to be a place for a federally approved exchange for trading. So that federally approved exchange is going to increase the odds that an ETF comes out because for obvious reasons, that's one of the big things lacking in the market right now. 
essentially they're looking to turn cryptocurrency and trading cryptocurrency into the same as trading stocks. This is what I'm looking for as a trader. Uh, it, it is absolutely going to allow for more chance to trade, more profitability, and more security. Right now I have significantly more capital in my Fidelity account trading stocks every single day compared to what I have on uh, GDAX or Coinbase Pro, I should say, because of number one reason, security. And if you give me that security, I will move more capital and trade with more capital in the cryptocurrency space. So it is something that I'm looking forward to. And again, I completely understand everybody's opinion that you know this is centralized and we don't like it. That's completely fine. But you're having a scenario where you're pretty much either going to have all of these institutions and centralized companies and powers it be like the banks, they're either going to fight cryptocurrency tooth and nail and try and destroy it, which obviously isn't happening at this point. They did not take that route or they're going to try and embrace it. And they see dollar signs. They're going to try and profit from it. So essentially, I believe what ICE is doing, not only do they see, you know, the fact that cryptocurrency is a moneymaker. I mean, look at the money that Binance is making. But I think they're targeting is I think it's a, a generational thing as well. I think they're targeting millennials. They know millennials are really interested in cryptocurrency and they view this as something for the next decade or two that can get them into that millennial market. You got to think of it from a marketing and money perspective. Everything is run by money in this industry specifically. And that's what we're seeing. So they're trying to give services to cater towards that audience. So the company is called Bakkt, B-A-K-K-T, and it is, again, going to launch in November, and we'll see how it goes from here. So I do believe that it's going to launch, it's going to get approved, we're going to have a federally regulated exchange, we're going to have ETFs. And then look at the, from here, when once we have all this, that opens the door for 401ks, it opens the door for IRAs. So ways for people to expose themselves in their long-term retirement holdings to 1%, 2%, 5%, cryptocurrencies and of course ETFs. And then once you have ETFs, we're going to get leveraged ETFs. So we're going to have a trading instrument that's going to go, you know, three times the price of what Bitcoin does on any given day, positive and negative. So you don't even have to short, you can just buy the inverse ETF leveraged long. And that's what we have right now on all these other different markets that ICE is currently regulating in terms of futures contracts and things like that. So ICE are the big boys. They are as big as you can get in the you know institutional and stock market world, and they are getting into the space significantly. So again, what they're looking to do with Starbucks and Microsoft, they're looking to replace credit cards essentially with you know opening up your phone, putting it a uh, stamp or whatever that allows you to swipe it, and that is the transaction. So again, it's very centralized. A lot of people say the issues: why are we using Bitcoin? You know, you can't have so many transactions on the blockchain. But what essentially the company would be doing is trading or moving these funds around within itself. And while it's doing that, it's not needing to put them on the blockchain. So again, very centralized, absolutely. But as long as the money's moving around, you know, buying and selling in between this exchange, they don't have to put those on the blockchain. So it's not clogging it up. When the money is leaving the company and or coming into the company, that's when it gets put to the blockchain. So all the transactions, which is going to be a significant amount of capital throughout any given trading day, as long as it's not leaving, then it's not being put on that blockchain essentially. So yes, centralized to the max. So again, everybody is going to have very opinion, varying opinions on this, but it's inevitable. There's no way we can fight this unless you want to go stand outside with a, a sign in front of the ICE office and not the, there's two ICEs in the US right now, but uh, really we just have to accept that these big companies are going to try and integrate with cryptocurrency. And it's probably gonna be the kind of thing, and if I had to imagine a future in the next decade of how this might play out, I think the big names are gonna get involved. I think they're going to significantly increase adoption by allowing for us to do things like, you know, pay at Starbucks or whatever in their own way. And then once that scaffolding is, you know, in place, that's when we can branch off in my opinion. And, you know, everybody says, oh, wow, using this stuff is really easy. Why don't we just make our own exchange and do the peer to peer like it was always meant to be? I think it might drift towards that. And it's, it's almost happening. I'm trying to think of a comparison, just something that comes to mind for me is that, you know, we have the alert system where we gather data and we use that data to generate signals based on different things happening on the charts. When we were doing that with the stock market, getting data on stock markets is very, very expensive. It's been, it's been 
really kept for big boys, major companies, because of how expensive it is and because it's a monopoly in terms of providing, you know, the tick for tick information on stocks throughout the trading day. But that industry is being disrupted right now by smaller companies that are coming in and offering this data for much, much cheaper. So it was never possible for these companies to do so when, you know, all this elect electronic, when the, the stock market world shifted from everybody yelling in the pits and screaming at each other to electronics, you know, transferring this data, you can't have a small company start up and, and start offering this data. Again, it was reserved for the big boys. But now that it's, you know, three decades into maturity, we're seeing it open up and we're seeing competition and we're seeing, I mean, even the fact right now that Fidelity and all these major players are dropping their commissions. When I first started trading, the commission was $7.95 a trade, then it dropped down and now it's $4.95 a trade. So they're competing with themselves. They're driving prices down. And these prices were so extremely over, you know, $8 a trade. It's costing these exchanges pennies on the dollar to run these through. They were just charging that amount because again, they have a monopoly on it. But now they no longer have a monopoly as all these other little companies are coming in. So I do believe that that's the way the cryptocurrency space is going to go in terms of, yes, it's centralized. It's It's got what people consider dirty hands playing in it. But once that scaffolding is built, then we can branch out and do our own thing once it's more widespread accepted, in my opinion. So there's a silver lining to it. We can look at it a couple different ways. Who knows how it's going to play out? It's all speculation anyways. But again, big news because this is a major milestone in what was needed for ETFs, 401ks, stock market money getting involved, all of that. So as a trader, absolutely, I love it. You know, if I were a Bitcoin, you know, 2000. 10 original OG founder player, I would not be pumped about this. But again, you have to accept that it's just going to be the way that it is because there's no way to stop these companies from integrating with cryptocurrency. It's just going to be up to, up to us as the consumers to move from it at a certain point and to do our own thing, which I do believe the space will do. So that's enough ranting and raving. Feel free to leave your opinions on it all. Again, there's going to be tons of varying opinions. And that's that. That's the way life goes. Bitcoin on the weekly. So our lower high is now set and we're consolidating. I do anticipate to form a higher low on this weekly time frame and see this weekly chart tighten up a little bit. We still have the ETF. Notice the psychology of this market. When's the last time you heard about the ETF? Maybe it was recently, but let's look at the daily chart. The I would love to see just stats, the amount of times the ETF was mentioned right here compared to how many times the ETF has been mentioned in the last six days, because it's dropped off the radar. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to August 10th or 16th, whatever date, you know, I mean, we have so many people counting different dates on when the actual day is going to be. I've heard the 10th, I've heard the 13th, I've heard the 16th. Either way, we're getting closer and closer, potentially a week, less than two weeks away. And it's just stopped talking about because the price is pulling back now. So it's so interesting to watch how psychologically that you know we associate things and fundamentals with price action and uh just a, an observation but healthy consolidation on the weekly in terms of you know we weren't anticipating to break this downtrend on this move i would have been shocked to break ten thousand. we were looking for a lower high in the low eight thousand dollar range we got it in the mid eight thousand dollar range and now in order to change this weekly trend we need a higher low compared to 5700 and then we need to break this recent top of 84.88. I would love to see a pullback for a second red week in a row, a lower wick on that second week next week. Let's say maybe a dip to 6,000. I believe I said in a recent video, 6,800, 6,900, a lower wick off of that. And then a bull break of 84.88 would be a trend change on the weekly time frame for the first time since consolidation from the all-time high. That would be the most bullish scenario in my opinion. And obviously a bearish scenario would be to just fade and break 57 with no bounce. So those are the two scenarios we're looking for. Either way, I think worst case for the bulls, I think we get an equilibrium. So worst case would be to pull back, form a higher low somewhere in the upper 6,000s, a lower high on the weekly, and then a bear break. That would be worst case scenario. I don't think it's going to be just a straight dump unless they reject that ETF right out of the gate. Honestly, at this point, the ICE news that we just got, I don't care if we reject this ETF because they're going to do it again. They're going to refile it again. And it's probably going to take a while. This this probably gives the SEC a reason to kick the can down the road. If they can delay until early January 2000, or maybe even February 2019, that's going to potentially give this new company a chance to be set up and establish itself. And if it gets rejected, it's just going to be approved later in 2019, in my opinion. 
as long as this ICE exchange is fed federally regulated and up and running. So Bitcoin on the daily chart, we're getting ready for a bounce. We've been pulling back six red days in a row. Look at the, again, we have April to compare to. It's so similar. What happened on April on the dump? We had a weak bear flag bounce. It was a nice three-day bounce. There were solid gains. We went from 82 up to 88. So that was essentially a 6 to 7% move. And then we continued down with further consolidation. I'm not looking to change any kind of trend. I'm just looking for a weak bounce to set a lower high on the daily time frame. And to do so, we have to change the four hour trend. We continuously reject from the four hour exponential resistance. I've been saying in these videos how the bears are just waiting at those resistance levels to establish positions rather than enter when the four hour RSI is oversold, wait for the bounce, wait for the lower high to be set. And we're continuously setting four hour lower highs at this point. So here's three lower highs to be watching right now with the most recent at 75.39 and we're heading back down. It is a potential bear flag at this point. We're going to have to see a pullback, a hold of 72.85, the low to this point, and then a bull break of 75.38 for us to say, all right, the daily bounce is underway. Now we're watching for a daily lower high to be set. Last night, I had a bunch of positions, a bunch of orders scaled in under 7,300 because the RSI levels were getting to a point where I was comfortable scaling in. 7291, 7281, 7161. Only one of those orders filled, and that's fine by me because it was instantly profitable. And again, just small winners for me. I'm just continuing to stack up those small winners. I'm, like I said, I'm trading way more capital with stocks right now, and I'm having way more success. And I'm in a streak right now with stocks that I've never been in in my life in terms of frequency of trading. I must have made 30 trades yesterday, just ripping off these, these scalp moves. And uh, again, it's so much easier to scalp in stocks. That's another reason that I'm potentially looking forward to a different fee structure, because if I take a million dollars in stocks and I market buy, and then the stock moves 20 cents and I market sell, and I just locked in you know, $2,000 in less than five minutes, my fees, I just paid $10 in fees for both trades added up. If I were to do that on Bitcoin with that amount of capital, I'm paying probably $4,000 in fees or more. It is not even comparable. So for scalping and market orders and large positions, it is so much more favorable to trade stocks than it is to trade cryptocurrency. Obviously, I can use limit orders, but that limits me, pun intended. So I would much rather have the freedom to be able to market, buy, and sell whenever I want and not really have those fees be any factor whatsoever. So that's what I've been doing. I have been playing the cryptocurrency space. I do still have some Bitcoin on this move. I sold those five that I got at 72.91. I sold them just under 7,500, anticipating that a four hour lower high was gonna come, still holding a very small position just to have a piece because I am looking for that daily little bounce. But again, I mean, the amount that that small position fluctuates compared to what my account in the stock market is fluctuating, it's not even really worth paying attention to at this point. So again, I would love a market where I can put significant capital in cryptocurrency and be actively trading it to the degree that I am with stocks. So that's what we're looking at for Bitcoin, pulling back hourly chart right now, trying to bounce after the, what I feel is a bearish reaction to that new Starbucks headline. And really we're still, the bears are still in full control. The bears have no reason to cover. They have no reason to fear anything. It's still four hour lower highs. Until those four hour lower highs change, the bears have complete control. So keep that in mind. We are approaching our key daily support of 7204. That's the next clear support level. So far we bounced off 7285. So if we see another leg down 7204, that initial higher low on the daily is a level that we're going to be looking at. Ethereum broke 400 and didn't flush down. So interesting to note that we have confirmed the weekly bear flag by breaking down to lower lows, but that flush of 400 was pretty anticlimactic where we only got $5 to the downside. And it doesn't mean, you know, we're going to turn around and rip for the bulls because we are tied hand in hand to Bitcoin at this point. And that correlation certainly still favors the Ethereum bears and the Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin bulls. But um, I dethroned, derailed myself with the Bitcoin. <laughs> so Ethereum is a bullish reversal candlestick on the daily. Same thing, just looking for a lower high. We're seeing this time and time again where these some of these altcoins, specifically Ethereum, they're seeing more bullish bounces than Bitcoin in the very short term. And then that fades. So again, it's, it's the oversold bounces occurring on the USD and the BTC pairing at the same time. And that allows for a little bit more gains, but it doesn't hold up. So short-term trading for flips, 
there can be some more significant gains in some of these more beat up names. If you're looking for day trading or swing trading or longer term, Bitcoin is still way more bullish than any of these names. So ETH, bullish reversal candlestick, four hour trend, very solid move, but it's still lower highs. The last lower high is 424.61, potentially a new lower high at 420.27. And we're looking to pull back and form a higher low. And because of the distance of this bounce, absolutely anticipating a higher low will form on the four hour time frame. And we need that higher low and then the break of the lower highs to get this daily bounce going. And we'll just look for a daily lower high. So as we know, we're looking at exponential resistances. Once we get over an exponential resistance on a certain time frame, we zoom out to the next time frame and we watch the exponential resistances on that one. So these levels are going to continue dropping down over the weekend and they may come into play if this daily bounce gets going. But as we know, Bitcoin has to change the four hour trend in order to be looking for Ethereum to change the four hour trend in any convincing way. Still trades to be had though, that break under 400, we have seen a 5% plus bounce, 6% bounce from that move. So 6% bounce in less than 24 hours is great for those bulls, but just wanna be locking in that profit while you have it because it is counter the trend at this point. IOT USD also seeing a ton of action today, trying to give a bullish reversal candlestick on the weekly. Another one where we broke key support, but the bulls are defending that support here at the end of the week. Look at this volume on the daily. That is a volume climax candlestick. It's the highest volume that we've seen in a month or so, and it's coming on a clear break of support and then a V-shaped recovery for these bulls where the low was 77, and here we are trading at 93. So that is a very significant, you know, 25% very roughly move in one day. Obviously a ton of upside and just a huge V-shaped recovery. Look at the volume, huge bear volume, and then the bulls blow that volume out of the water. So very significant v-shaped recovery definitely trapped some shorts there rsi was almost single digits on the four hour time frame so just getting down to extreme levels hourly chart has higher lows very clearly in play right now when we lose the hourly higher lows that tells us some four hour consolidation is coming so the most recent one is 919 and then we're looking down at 885 and 875 and again the four hour chart will need healthy consolidation to establish a higher low when those hourly higher lows are lost. Daily time frame, are we close to changing the trend? Absolutely not. We're not anywhere near it. The lower highs I'm looking at are 106 and 104. So from where we currently stand, we still need another oh, 13, 14% to even break the daily lower high. So at this point, the bulls are just looking for a four hour higher low and ideally seeing some continuation that would show a lot of follow through and strength, but tons of trading volatility there. And if you are a bear, Losing the hourly higher low pattern is a potential bearish entry and then top fishing the high of 9676 if that stop loss is acceptable for your risk profile on a trade. That's where we stand. So all in all, again, I mean, I, I love technical analysis, but if you've been watching these videos every single day for the past, oh, maybe three weeks at this point, Bitcoin has essentially done everything that we have been expecting it to in terms of seeing the bull move, setting a weekly lower high, starting weekly consolidation when the daily higher lows were lost. It's been a very clear and concise way to stay in tune with the market, not having to always be looking for articles. What's causing this move? What's causing this move? Because it's all rational and fits within what technical analysis generally would be looking to do. So again, it, I love the technical analysis erases the why out of price movement. Why is it moving? Because that's how markets move. We broke a key support. We broke a key resistance. These different things are playing out. And uh, it's been a great, you know, if I were to make a course on technical analysis, could potentially use a lot of the last three weeks to lay out establishing a game plan, looking forward for the next few days in terms of what to anticipate, but keeping the overall trend in mind because we are still in a downtrend at this point, And that is not gonna change anytime soon unless we get some positive ETH news that would be a big surprise, or I should say ETF news. And even if we don't, we're just gonna be watching for a tightening pattern. And again, everybody in this market needs to anticipate absolutely we could break 5,700 and see lower lows on this weekly time frame as we head into 2019. So I appreciate you all watching. Hope you have a great weekend. Got some, dug up some more farm clips here at the end of the video. And we'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Have a great day, night and everything. Do good things.